In this little video, I just want to cover the changes that we see primarily histologically in the female reproductive system during the estrus cycle. So let's start out here with the ovary. Okay, so the follicular phase is under the stimulus of follicle stimulating hormone for the development of our follicles. As those follicles mature, we're going to have increased estrogen. This is going to cause a positive feedback so that we get follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone increasing. That gives us our LH surge prior to ovulation. Okay. There is an in-house test available for testing for that luteinizing hormone peak, but it must be tested every day, so it gets kind of expensive, which is why doing vaginal smears might be useful to you. Okay. With ovulation, we get formation of the corpus luteum. Okay. If fertilization does not occur, we're going to have prostaglandin F2 alpha secreted by the uterus, and then the corpus luteum is going to degenerate. Otherwise, it will persist for various amounts of time, depending on the species. Okay, then we, when we look at the uterus during proestrus, we're going to see hypertrophy of the epithelium. Okay, in the canine, we're going to see an increase in vascularity. As that endometrium swells, we get congestion, and we get extravasation of the erythrocytes. Okay, so that's going to lead to the bleeding that we see in dogs. So when we see a bloody vaginal discharge, this blood is actually coming from the uterus. And this is an indication of impending estrus. Okay, we move into estrus. We're going to see that we continue the proliferation of glands and the epithelium. We're going to get increased vascularity. We're going to see edema. Okay, so as we see here, we've got a lot more space in here, a lot more space in the vascular area as well as out here in the parametrium. Okay, we see the mitosis occurring here and here with proliferation of the endometrium in the glands. Okay, we also see macrophages that have engulfed the erythrocytes. So we do have edema. Okay, we move into metestrus we're going to see that the glands continue to grow become very secretory okay the endometrium is very thick and vascular look at these great big vessels here okay so it's very vascular now as we prepare for implantation okay we move into diastrus the glands are well developed the endometrium is thick and vascular okay if we don't have pregnancy then we're going to have involution of this. We do see in cattle metestrous bleeding. This is increased vascularity and bleeding at the caruncles. Most frequently seen in heifers, usually occurring within 24 hours of ovulation. Then as we move back into anestrous, the epithelium becomes low, endometrium becomes thin, and there's fewer glands. Okay. Then if we look at the cervix, we see in the cervix it starts to relax and secrete mucus in proestrus. In estrus it's going to be totally relaxed. The mucus is going to be increased primarily in the horse, cow, and pig. Okay, and it's going to be a thin mucus. But then when we move into the luteal phase, that mucus is going to thicken up to form our cervical plug. Okay. Now let's have a look at canine vaginal smears. Because even though we do have progesterone assays available, there's still some dependence on vaginal cytology for canine breeding management. Okay. So the reasons you would still do these is because you want to establish the first day of diastrus. Okay. It helps to decide when to start using the progesterone assay because each test costs about sixty to seventy-five dollars. 
It's also helpful to see, is it too late to breathe the bitch? Okay, so you may still need to be doing this. Okay, so anyhow, in proestrus, we talked about the proestral bleeding. And so therefore, in our smears, we're going to see a lot of erythrocytes in that vaginal smear. Okay, the epithelial cells will begin to keratinize at this point because our epithelium is, is becoming thicker in the vagina. Okay. So we see here proestrus, a lot of red blood cells. White blood cells may see a few, but hardly any. Keratinized cells are beginning. We have mostly nucleated cells. Okay? So we move into estrus. The characteristic for estrus is to see just all these keratinized cells. Okay, without nuclei. So, we're going to have a decrease in the erythrocytes. Not much in the way of white blood cells as well. But we're going to see a lot of keratinized cells. So, why would we want to have keratinized stratified squamous epithelium? That's right, we're in preparation of mating. So, we're going to have a foreign object, as it were, inserted into the vagina, and we want protection. Okay. Nucleated cells be very rare. Then when we move into the luteal phase, we're going to see an absence of the erythrocytes. We're going to see that the leukocytes increase dramatically. Okay. We're also going to see a loss of the keratinized cells, maybe a few initially. And the nucleated cells are going to increase. Okay, as we move later into diastrus, we're going to see lack of erythrocytes, more white blood cells, no keratinized cells, and more nucleated cells. Okay, okay. So why would we see this increase in leukocytes following estrus? That's right, we have just had a foreign object inserted into the vagina and the body is going to mount a defense against any bacteria that has entered. Okay? As we get into anestrus, we're going to see a 1 to 5 ratio of non-keratinized cells to leukocytes. Okay, so it's going to be primarily leukocytes. Now let's look at the vulva. Basically, it starts to become swollen edematous in the sow and the bitch. becomes warm to the touch, so we are coming into heat. Okay. During estrus itself, it's going to be very swollen and edematous. And it is going to be warm. Okay. We may see a mucus discharge from the cervix and the vestibular glands at this time as well. Okay. So this is when the animal is in heat. 